<laughs> Not enough for this weary old woman, but I'm hanging in. And glad you're here. We need to get going. Practice test. Yeah, somebody said, why don't you just call in sick? No. No. <laughs> she really she do that. First of all, I don't know how to work this soul thing you have to do. So, yeah. All right. I told you that I would tell you which quadrants. Of course, I didn't on the paper, so I'm telling you now. I promise it'll be on the test. I promise. Um, and if it's not, I will tell you. So we're going to draw a triangle in quadrant four. And the sign opposite over hypotenuse tells me that this angle is how big? 60. Now, because the angle is coming down, the answer is not 60, it's 60 would be up here. And it's not, it's down here. All right, this one's in quadrant two. And the cosine is negative one over root two which tells me that this angle is how big, 45. Now, if you say the answer is 45, you'll be wrong, because 45 is in quadrant one, remember? If you say the answer is negative 45, that will be wrong, because negative 45 is in quadrant four. How big, this is the angle. Always start measuring here, zero. This is the angle. How big is it? 135 degrees. For those of you that can't figure out how we got 135, remember, this is 180. So how much added to 45 is going to give us 180? In other words, 180 minus 45? That's how we got 135. If you are in quadrant two, your answer has to be between 90 and 180, doesn't it? If you're in quadrant two, make sure it is between 90 and 180. All right, now here's one of the tricky ones. This says that the sign of the angle is positive and the cotangent of the angle is negative. Now, I want you to stop and think about what sine is. Sine is y over r. What's cotangent? x over y. Okay? Now, if sine is positive, if this fraction is positive, doesn't that mean y has to be positive? Because r is always positive. Remember, R hypotenuse, always positive. So Y has to be positive. Where does it happen in your coordinate plane that the Ys are positive? Are the Ys positive here? Everything's positive here. So your ordered pair is positive, positive. What about over here? Negative, positive. Y is still positive. What about down here? Yeah. We're, we're not going to be down here, are we? So we're up here. If y has to be positive. Now, if x over y is negative, can I be here? Yes. No, because nothing is negative here, right? So therefore, what quadrant do I have to be in? Quadrant two. So the answer to the question is quadrant two. That takes some thinking, guys. You gotta think, you gotta logic that out. I have confidence that you can do it. Always think about X and Y. Okay, now we have some sketching. Tomorrow, or whenever I see you again, I will turn back your um, Alright, so here we go. I am sketching.
refreshing. Yes. So the first thing I think about is it's cosine. And it's positive cosine. And I know what that looks like. That looks like this. Dot, dot, dot. Now, normally, these labels would be what? What would these be normally? One and negative one. Not this time. Two thirds times one. So it's going to be two thirds and negative two thirds, which means my amplitude is two thirds. circumstances. Asymptote at negative, negative 90 and 90. Squiggle up through the origin just like that. Everybody okay? That's normal. That's normal. Now, what does the 2 do? Nothing. Nothing. Because 2 impacts the Amplitude, and what do we know about tangents? There is no amplitude. Speaking of no, there's no number here. So the period hasn't changed. So negative 90 to 90 are my asymptotes, and my period is 180 degrees. it is negative, which means that it goes down first instead of up. There's my sign. Now, what would these be normally? Negative one and one, but now I times that by three. <laughs> So my amplitude is three, positive. Some of you put negative on your quiz. Is amplitude ever negative? No, no, no. These labels, just like with the cosine, would normally be your circle numbers. Zero, 90, 180, 270. But what's happened, we divided by and 90 divided by two-thirds is the same as 90 times three halves, which is 270 divided by two or 135. Now, remember what I told you? We can do this math again and again and again, or we can just start adding 135s. So 270, uh, 405, 540. So my period 
these 540 acres. Now we gotta get our calculators out. Because the rest of it is calculator. Okay, number eight, convert to degrees, minutes, seconds, 18.775 degrees. Type in 18.775, second angle DMS, and you should get 18 degrees, 46 minutes, 30 seconds. We went through all that before. I'm not going to do it again. You can go back and watch the video. You can find a friend. Okay? Or come. Come to office hours. Always talk. All right. Evaluate round to the nearest 10,000. What does that mean? 10,000. Right, what is 10,000 10,000. How many decimal places? Four. I'm rounding to four decimal places. All right, so these are, this is the section on the test. suggest that you look at your section of problems here and put a little star by the ones that don't have a degree mark in okay so no degree mark no degree mark and that's it right so I'm going to start with those so I'm going to go to my mode and I'm going to change my calculator into radians. And then I'm going to type tangent 1.15. 2.2345 is what you should be seeing on your screen. Right? Tyron, where's the calculator? Okay, now this one, now what button do I press here? It's right there in front of you. What button do you press? Second cosine 0.376, and that one is 1.1853. All of the rest of the problems have degree mark in them, right? So we're going to go to mode, change our calculator into degree. This will be the only section on the test where you're in radians, okay? So on test day, you are going to have to change into radian mode and then change back to degree mode. All right, so I'm in degrees. All right, here we go, sign 2814. Sine, 28 second angle degree, 14 second angle minute, 0.4731. No partial credit on these problems. You either know how to type them in or you don't. So please make sure that you know how to type them in. Don't just write down the answer. Secant. How do I type that into my calculator? Because I do not have a secant button. One divided by cosine. One divided by cosine 19. 1.0576. Cosine 98. Negative, which is fine, sometimes they're negative, negative 0.1392. And 
then how do I do this one? How do I get a cosecant? One divided by sine. And this one's got a minutes in it, so remember how we do that. One divided by sine, 15, second angle degrees, 19, second angle minutes, and then 11 alpha plus 3.78489. Okay, so let's just rehash that real quick. This is the section on the test where you're going to have to use your mode. If you do the whole thing in degrees, you're going to miss the radian ones. If you do the whole thing in radians, you're going to miss the degree ones. You've got to set your mode appropriately. Everything else on the test, including these next problems, are going to be in degrees. So we want to make sure that we have our calculator set in degrees for the whole rest of the test. look at this guy right here. With regard to this angle, which side is this? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Adjacent. Which side is this? Oh. Hypotenuse. We're going to write an equation. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Cosine. Cosine x Angle always goes with the cosine. Cosine x equals 11 over 14. How do I type that in on my calculator? No, 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 no. Do not multiply by 14. Do not do any math. The only way to get x is to use which button? Second cosine. Guys, we talked about this. You've got to put in some time and practice on your own. Second cosine, 11 divided by 14. The angle is 38 degrees, and it doesn't say how to round. I'll just do 121, or 38.21 degrees. Sorry, 38.21 degrees. All right, same thing. Here's my angle. Which side is this? Opposite. Which side is this? Adjacent. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. So tangent 28 equals opposite over adjacent. Now, am I going to use a button like this? Nope. I'm going to do math, type it straight in. So x tan 28 equals 13, and x equals 13 divided by tan 28. 13 divided by tan 28. I got 24.4, if I'm rounding to the 100, 4, 5. <coughs> So what would 118 look like? 118 would be down here like this, right? And that's all you have to do. Now we did some that were way more complicated than that, but this is it. Why you went easy on this? Because I'm a wuss. All right. Find the 
exact and the calculator value for sine inverse tangent to this. Okay? So let's do it by hand first. Remember how we did these? We draw a picture of this. Which quadrant do I draw that in? One. Opposite is two, adjacent is five. Now what? Pythagorean theorem. What does that give me for my hypotenuse? 29. 29. And now I need the sign. <coughs> so what's the sign of my angle? Uh, two, over 2 over root 29 or 2 root 29 over 29. That is the exact answer. Okay, now we're going to do it decimally. Just type the buttons on the paper. Sign, second, tangent, 2 divided by 5. And you should have gotten 0.37139. Where's your calculator? Tyron, totally not cool. Okay, everybody get 0.37139? Perfect. So, the exact value, remember, what does the test going look like? This. The exact value is this one. The decimal value is the one you get on your calculator. Okay? If you want to check this, type 2 divided by the square root of 29. Just type this in right here. And guess what you get? Uh huh. You got the same thing you did decimal, right? Okay. Perfect. All right. Now we got some word problems. I put five word problems on here, but the test will not have five. It will have less than that. But I put five. Okay. Draw a picture. Write an equation. Solve it, round in the nearest hundredth. Now those directions don't include label your answer. Remember in a word problem, it's feet or something, right? All right, so here we go. We have a squirrel, of course we do, sitting in the top of a tree. And what's he doing? He's looking at a nut on the ground. His angle of depression is 37.8 degrees. Everybody still with me? The tree is 76 feet tall. Find the distance from the nut to the base of the tree. So where does my X go? Right down here. Now you write an equation. Drew the picture. Now we're going to write an equation. Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. Tangent. Tangent, 37.8 equals 76 over x. What do I do? Times by x. And then divide by tangent. So 76 over tan, 37.8.
Well, look what we have now. We have a seagull on top of the lighthouse. I'm looking at a fish. The gull is 78 feet above sea level. The gull is 320 feet from the fish. Where's the 320? I've got you. There's gold, there's fish. I want the angle of depression. Don't just copy down my picture. Do you get it? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Sine. Sine X. Angle always goes with the sine. So sine X equals 78 over 320, opposite over hypotenuse. How do I type that one in? Second sign. That's second the second sign. Because I do second sign when I am finding the angle. angle. So here we go. Second sign, 78 over 320. 14.11 degrees. That is an angle. So its unit is degrees. Not feet. Degrees. On fire All right. How far is an airplane from the airport if he is currently Six five four three feet above the ground, and the angle of depression is twenty three degrees. How does that picture look, everybody? Where's my X? Hypotenuse. Airplane to airport. There it is. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Sine twenty three equals 6,543 divided by x times by x and divide by sine 23. So hopefully you got 16,000 745.53 feet. Okay, now we have a flagpole. What's the flagpole doing? Making a shadow. So we want to find the height of the pole. Shadow is 31 feet long on the ground. And the angle of elevation is 29. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Tangent 29 equals opposite over adjacent. <coughs> 31 tan 29, type it in. Looks like it's 17.18 feet tall. And finally, I have a man looking at the top of the building. The building is 84 feet tall and he is standing 1,234 feet from the building. Where does the one, two, three, four go? At the bottom. At the bottom. There's the building, there's the man, that's one, two, three, four. And what do I want? The angle of elevation. Sine, cosine, or tangent. Somebody tell him. Please, 
That's not even a question. Where does the angle always go? There's only one place the angle goes, and it's right there every single time. It never goes anywhere else. Okay? So tan x equals 84 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh-oh, how do I type this in? Second tangent. Second tangent. 84 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. 3.8. Nine degrees. Practice test one done. All right. Moving on. Practice test two. Put the calculators away. This test will be in two distinct parts. when you took your exam, how you did one card, and then you traded in and got the other card. That's how this will work. One page front and back, no calculator. Another page front and back with calculator, just exactly like this, okay? So here we go. No calculator page. 7 pi over 10. How do we change that into this? 180 in here. Change in the radians. Right? This is a little more work. How do we do that? Pi over 180 equals x over 200. That's how you set it up, everybody. So 180x equals 200 pi. What do I divide by? Remember, I'm trying to get x by itself. So I divide by 180. Now I can cancel out the tens. Those are the zeros. I'm left with 20 over 18. So I can cancel out a 2. And I'm left with 10 pi over 9. So that would be the answer to the question. Does pi always be on the right? Radians over degrees. Radians over degrees. No, at the end. Honey, you're solving for x. So it's going to be wherever it is. Okay? We're going to get x by itself. You're going to cross multiply and get x by itself. If I wrote 200 pi equals 180x, I would be over here. That has nothing to do with it. Just solve for x. All right, who remembers how we do this arc length problem? We have an angle that's 100 degrees. We have a radius is 8 feet. And we want to find the measure of this arc right here. Who remembers how we do that? Radian, 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 arc length equals radius times radians. The radius is 8. That's not a problem. The problem is my angle is in degrees and I need it to be in radians. So what do I need to do? what I just did. So, pi over 180 equals a x over 100. I have my degrees with the 180. So, 180 x equals 100 pi. I'm going to divide by 180. What is that going to reduce to? 5 pi over 9, that is not the answer to the question. Don't put it in the answer blank. That is this angle right here. So now I can take my radius times my radians. So what's 8 over 1 
times 5 pi over 9. 40 pi over 9. And what would be the unit on that? Feet. This is a length. That length is going to match this length. And that's your unit. that tells me whether I'm going to be positive or negative on my answers. Okay, the sign is two fifths. So opposite over hypotenuse is two fifths. Now I need to find my missing side. I wish I had a nickel for every Pythagorean mistake, mistake that was made, I would be rich. Because for simply, some of us are not paying attention. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and what C? Hypotenuse. So five squared goes over here. A squared goes here, and B squared is what I am looking for. So B squared is 21, and this is negative square root 21. So now I can fill it in. What's the cosine? Negative, negative root 21 over 5. Guys, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the tangent? 2 over negative root 21 or negative 2 root 21 over 21? What's the cosecant? Well, it's the reciprocal of the sine, so 5 halves. The secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. And then the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. Okay, we've almost been through a whole test because we're almost to where we started. All right, here we go. Cotangent 300. Where is 300? Right here. Up. big is this angle? Keep in mind, it's formed by the 300 and the 360, so it's 60. Root 3, 1, 2, with a negative on the root 3. Cotangent. What's cotangent? Adjacent 
over opposite. So one over negative root three, negative root three over So that would get me to negative 360. How much more do I have to go? Uh, Don't I have to go another 60? Yeah. 360 and 60. So I'm down here. I'm down here because it's negative. I do it this way. All the way around and then 60 more. So that actually is the same triangle as I had for this problem. But I need the sign this time. So what's the sign? Opposite over hypotenuse, negative root three over two. this a root 3, which makes this angle how big? This one here. 60. But the answer isn't 60. The answer has to be between 90 and 180. That's where you're sitting. So this is the answer. 120. The answer is 120. Three more problems and we'll be done. Okay? Here we go. Tangent 7 pi over 4. Cosine 3 pi over 2. All right, what do I have to do first? Figure out how many degrees 7 pi over 4 is. So how many degrees is that? Okay, you're all sitting there with the calculator. How do we figure that out? 180 divided by 4 times 7, or 7 times 180 divided by 4, what is it? 315. All right, so now I got to draw 315, which is going to put me over here. Right? Here's my perpendicular. I need this angle, which is from 315 up to 360. 45. Guys, is it ever going to be 35? No. It's always going to be 45, 60, or 30. Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, one, one, root two, and that one has to be negative. 
I want the tangent. What's tangent? Opposite over adjacent, negative one over one. The answer is negative one. Hang in there, two more problems. Three pi over two, where, what's that? That's 270. Wait a second. Where's 270? On the circle. The radius is one. So what are the coordinates of that point? Zero, negative one. So x equals zero, y is negative one, and r is one. I want cosine. What's cosine? X over r, so that's zero over one, which is zero. 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 Last one. This is the tricky one. This is the brain. This is where we have to actually think a little bit. I know. Cosine is negative, and cosecant is positive. Now, what's cosine again? Negative. X over R. Mm -hmm. So if X over R is negative, doesn't that mean X has to be negative? So when you think about your coordinate plane, is X negative here? Here? Okay. So here, is X negative here? How about here? All right. So this narrows it down to either quadrant two or three. Now what's cosecant? R over Y. R over Y. And if that's positive, that means Y has to be positive? Is Y positive up here? Winner, is Y positive down here? No. Loser. So which quadrant is the answer? Two. 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 All right. You cannot get your phone, but you can gather your things up. Yeah, bro. Dude, two million dollars in a Ferrari, bro. My best friend. You sit on stream for hours. You're laughing. Yeah, for hours.